In this exercise, we're going to be creating an HTML5 web page. We'll be making a more robust HTML5 page, and once we have the page coded up as HTML5, we'll be adding CSS to format the page so that it looks like this page right here. We're going to be working with a little bit of CSS3 technology on this page too, which will also be new to you. Let's get started on the HTML page. The starting file that I'm going to provide for you just has the basic structure for an HTML5 page. We have our doc type, we have our HTML tag, and inside the head we have our meta that sets the character set. We also have a page title which will be changing to HTML5 slash CSS3. We have our conditional comment that points to the HTML5 shiv and remember this is here so that if a browser comes to our web page that is less than IE9 it'll load this JavaScript file and this file is going to ensure that our page will work in those older IE browsers. I'm going to give you a page with an embedded style tag. We'll be actually creating an external style sheet for this so we're just going to cut this rule right here and we will change this to be a link tag and our file will be located in a CSS folder and we're just going to call it main.css and we should set our rel to style sheet and the type to text CSS and link tags are self-closing so we'll self-close that. We're going to close the head and then we have the body tag and the closing HTML tag. I'm going to create a new file and this will be my CSS file. I'm going to paste in the CSS rule that I had copied from before. Just tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to be saving this page in my root directory. I'll create a new folder called CSS and we'll call this file main.css. So now I have the two files that I'll be using for this exercise, the CSS file and of course my HTML. Let's begin by coding up our HTML. The first thing that I'm going to include on my page is going to be a header. The header tag is going to contain an H1 and the H1 is just going to say the HTML5 slash CSS3 blog. The page that we're going to be building is going to mimic a blog, although we'll just be building one page, but we're going to set this up as if it were a page that would ultimately be used for a blog website. The next element that I'm going to have on my page is going to be my nav tag. The nav tag is going to have an ID of main. We'll actually be using more than one nav tag, so I want to ensure that I name this one so that I can target it independently with my CSS. The next element that we're going to add onto our page is going to be an unordered list and we've used this technique before to create menu items. My unordered list is going to contain a series of list items and each list item is going to contain a link and I'm just going to set these up to be null links and I'll just name my links link 1, link 2, link 3, link 4, etc. Once my nav tag has closed I'm going to create a section tag. And again, in this exercise, I'm going to have more than one section, so I'm going to give this section an ID of intro. Inside the section tag, I'll be creating a header tag, and the header tag is going to contain an H2 and an H3. As you build your page, you might find it useful to put in some HTML comments, just to remind yourself of the various tags that are on your page. Next, I'm going to create an aside tag. The aside tag is going to be used to contain some additional links that would go to other places on our page. Each series of links is going to be wrapped inside of a section tag and each section is going to contain a header and its own navigation. You can see that I'm using a similar structure here although I haven't named this with any sort of ID or class but I have a nav tag. The nav tag wraps around an unordered list and the unordered list contains list items that are going to point to null links. Once I have this section in my aside, I'm going to copy the section tag and I'm going to paste that in one more time. We're going to have another section appear on our page, but this one will have links to archives on our blog site. And these names are going to change to dates. 
The next thing that we're going to place on our page is going to be another section tag. This section I'm going to give a ID and we're going to call the ID blog post. This section is going to contain a header which is going to have an H2 which will introduce the section as well as a paragraph and this paragraph is going to contain a link. My name is going to be in a link. The next portion of our page is going to be an article. The article will follow the header. Inside the article we're going to put the main content for our page. The first thing that I'm going to include is going to be a paragraph tag. The next thing that I'm going to place on my page is going to be an image. The image is going to have a caption and I'm going to wrap both the image and the caption inside a figure tag. In HTML5 you can use figure tags to identify images, especially images that are going to be grouped with captions. From this particular page on our site I'm going to go into the images page and the file that I'm looking for is called codeexample.jpg. I'll be sure to include an alt tag in case somebody visits my site that has their images turned off for some reason. Image tag self close so I'll self close this. The next item that I'm going to place is going to be a fig caption tag. Fig captions are used to create captions with figures. By using fig caption we create a relationship between the image and the caption. Next I'll place several more paragraphs on my page. Now I do want to show you what my page looks like in the browser at this point. Here's the page and it starts off much like you would expect it to do. I have my H1, I have an unordered list that contains links, then I have the H2 and the H3, here's the content that goes inside my aside, and here's the article. So I start off with my H2, I have a paragraph or two, and here's my image with the figure caption. Down here my page starts to get a little bit funky. If you look on the page, this paragraph right here is incomplete. It's missing some content in the second sentence. And if we look inside of our HTML code, you can see that I've actually placed some content on my page that's surrounded by angle brackets. Well, because angle brackets designate a tag in HTML, this content is not rendering properly. Whenever you place angle brackets on your page, you need to put the appropriate code to have them render. The less than character is created by using an ampersand, LT, and a semicolon. Greater than is created by doing an ampersand, GT, and a semicolon. If I save my page now and we refresh in the browser, you're going to see that now that content is displaying properly on the page. So that looks pretty good. Down here though, my page starts to fall apart again. Right after this word right here, you can see the word 2 is larger and it's also bold. The remaining content on my page is bold and much smaller. If we look inside the content that's on the page, you can see that I'm talking about an H1 and an H6 tag. Because these are specific tags, what happens here is it actually renders the word 2 as an H1. Then I have an H6 tag, so all the rest of the content on the page is now rendered as an H6 heading. And since I never close the H6 heading, it just is going to do that for the rest of the content on the page. Once again, in order to have the page render properly, I need to put in the code that will allow me to display the less than and greater than symbols in the appropriate way. Now that I've done that and saved my page, if we go back and refresh in the browser, you can see that the page looks like we would expect it to look. The information that I'm conveying is displaying in the way that I want it to. I'm just going to make some HTML comments that remind me that this is the closing of the article tag for blog post and that this is the closing tag for the blog post section. I find it especially helpful to put in these comments especially when the closing tags get pushed fairly far away from the opening tags. Now we'll insert another section on our page. This is going to contain the comments that people will be allowed to post on the page. This of course won't function in this manner on our page because we're building a static page, but we're coding this up so that the page could be rolled into a content management system or something like that at a future time. I'm going to tag this section with an ID of comments so that I can hook this independently of the rest of the content on the page when it comes time to adding my CSS. We'll start this page off by applying a header tag and this is going to contain an H3 and then I'm going to create a series of article tags. The article tags are all going to be formatted in the same way. 
Each comment that someone makes is going to be wrapped inside of an article tag. Each article is going to contain a header. Each header is going to contain a link which is the person's name that posts the comment. That's going to be followed by the date and time in which they make the comment. In HTML5, we have a time tag that can be used by the browsers to identify time. All of a sudden, this content will be more meaningful if we wrap it inside of a time tag. I'll do that now. The time tag gets attributes of date time and then we'll pass on the value. The value is going to be the year, dash the month, dash the day. And since I'm also passing on the time, I immediately make an uppercase T and then I pass on the time at which they have made their comment. Once the date and time are completed, I'll close the time tag. All of a sudden, this content on the page has meaning to a browser. Instead of just being a series of characters and numbers, the browser is interpreting this information as a specific day and a specific time. This can really help when you're making a more dynamic web page in which you're going to want to pass on or retrieve information that is, needs to be formatted as date and time. Now that I have my article set up, I'm just going to copy paste the article two times and change some of the contact information to be the other posters that are going to have made a comment on my site. So I'll copy this article and we'll just paste it in. And then I'm just going to change the person that's making the post and the time in which they're creating the post. All right, now you can see that I have three article tags that have been placed on my page. Each article tag contains a header, which contains a link, which contains the person's name, followed by the time tag, which has been formatted appropriately. Then I have a paragraph, and then I close the article. And I've just repeated this, as I mentioned, three times within this section of my page. Let's make a comment to designate the closing part of this section. The next thing that will appear on the page is going to be our footer. We'll of course be putting this inside of a footer tag. And the footer tag on this particular website is going to be a little bit more robust. I'm going to place a div inside the footer. Just because I need a hook for my CSS to be able to style this content in a particular way. So I'm just going to create a div and I don't even need to put an ID or a class on that. We'll use specificity to hook this particular div. Inside the footer, I'm going to have three different sections. The first section is just simply going to contain information about the company. I'll add a section tag, and I'll add a header and some paragraph text. After this first section, I'm going to create two more sections. They are going to be similar to the sections that we created within the aside tag. So they'll contain headers with H3s and unordered lists that contain some sort of navigational components. I've decided not to wrap these though inside of a nav tag since they're not actually navigational components for this particular website. They're more like navigational items that just kind of add additional content. I'm going to copy this section and I'll paste it in. I'm going to give this one an ID of popular and I'll change some of the text in here. All right, I'll save my page, and if we look in the browser, this is our ending page so far. Remember that we don't have any CSS, we just have the raw HTML comment. At this point, I'm ready to add the CSS. We'll do that in the next video.